Good evening, everyone, and welcome to another episode of 60 and Beyond with Skylark. So for anybody who's new tonight, please take a moment when you have time to subscribe to my YouTube channel, Skylark Live. And if you wouldn't mind also liking my page on Facebook, Skylark Live, and Twitter, Instagram, and LinkedIn. You can follow me in all those places. So each first Monday of the month, I create a, a brand new vlog uh, on a topic that I've been thinking about for the month. And I also do a live promo on Facebook um, to promote what I'm, to sort of tease you and lead up to what I'm gonna talk about on the first Monday of the month, like tonight. So by now, most of you know that we're gonna talk about uh, love the skin you're in. And um, so what does that really mean? You know, yesterday was an absolutely incredible beach day. And I spent the whole day on the beach with um, two of my sisters. I have four, but two of them live locally. So, and my brother, and we had such a great time together. I mean, we're really learning how to be together, let each other talk, no bitter words. Trust me, it's a lifetime sentence. <laughs> it really takes a long time, but you can do it. You know, it requires um, being comfortable in your skin. And that is exactly what I'm going to talk about tonight. So being together, being very present, being comfortable in front of each other, even though you're sisters, it doesn't mean that you don't get uncomfortable. Of course, we all have that history of sibling rivalry. And in my case, we're all very close in age. So there was even more, uh, is rivalry too strong a word? You know, you know how it gets with siblings and especially with sisters. So, but my sisters are amazing women and um, I have such respect and reverence for them. So I was digging the skin I was in and I was rocking my new bathing suit. So I was feeling pretty good. Why not, right? Gotta feel good. So I have lots to talk about tonight. I post on the patch, the Bayshore patch, um, an article every first Monday of the month that introduces what I'm going to speak about I posted that on Facebook on my Skylark Live page, so you can go and, and read it there. But I'm going to read a little bit from it right now to give you an idea of where we're going to go tonight. So love the skin you're in. That can mean so many things, right? But what does it mean to you? What is learning to love? I have to look at my notes here. Learning to love the skin to me means believing in myself. For you, believing in yourself. Believing in yourself. What does that mean? Believing that you are so unique. There is no one like you, no one. So there's no reason to even compare yourself to anybody else or to feel less than fantastic around everybody. And when you do feel a little uncomfortable, take a moment, think about what is making you uncomfortable. A lot of the time it's, it's old memories. You know, it's something that happened in the past. I can bet you 99% of the time. And it's triggering something that's making you feel uncomfortable. Are you not feeling pretty enough? Are you not feeling smart enough, thin enough, tall enough? You know, whatever the case is, when that happens, we have to take a moment, pause, adjust, so we can find our comfort zone. It's really important to be comfortable in your own skin. Focus on your positives and really try to ignore outside influences that try to dictate how you should be or how you should look. Straight hair, curly hair, big lips, thin lips, green eyes, black eyes, blue eyes, brown eyes. What is uniquely you? Uniquely you. You can't change it. You can enhance it. You can wear makeup. I love to wear makeup. Um, I haven't had any work done on my face. I, I don't plan to yet. I mean, I don't, I don't think so. 
but I don't want to deviate from the topic because that can also help you feel better in the skin you're in. Come on, they have Restylane, they have Botox, a lot of things that can enhance skin, good skincare products. All of these things can really help us feel better about the skin we're in. Now, I'm not only talking about facial skin, I'm talking about the skin you're in, you being comfortable in your skin, everything, with your body, with your shape, with your weight, all of it. And if you don't like it, there are so many great ways that you can change it. First, I spoke in one of my promos about cutting out carbohydrates or really cutting back on them. It is one of the best things you can do to drop some weight and it comes off very quickly when you start to really watch those carbs. Um, you're the only one who knows what it's like to live in your skin, inside your body. You know yourself better than anybody else. You are your best friend. There's no one else or nothing else that can make you feel great in your skin but you. You. You're it. Somebody else can be attracted to you and that can be very flattering, of course. I mean, you know, we all like to know that we're pretty or that we're attractive to someone, right? So that's cool. But you, you're the one that has to decide how comfortable you are in your own skin. I have also learned, well, I've experienced self-doubt. Yeah. Yeah. Don't we all, right? I mean, that's part of the human condition is to have a little bit of doubt. Should I, shouldn't I? Oh, I don't know, am I smart enough to do that? Do I, do I think I can handle that? But I've learned how to quiet that negative voice in my mind because I know from my own experience how much goodness there is inside of me and how much ability, how much potential. I've become confident in that. And that's all part of being comfortable in the skin you're in. When you're comfortable in your own skin, you're happier. And the people around you are happier. You have a much better time when you're liking how you feel in your own skin. There's nothing worse than feeling uncomfortable or self-conscious, right? Those aren't good feelings. So we can, we can really dispel those. So that's what self-love can do. Call it what you want. Self-esteem, self-confidence, body image. There's really no doubt that it's sometimes a lot of us feel very uncomfortable. Maybe, you know, you gained a few pounds through COVID, haven't we all? Or through the winter and you go to put on your favorite jeans and they're tight, they're binding, they're uncomfortable. So you're not really feeling so great in your skin, but all right, so adjust some of your food. You can lose a little weight and then those genes feel better, right? It's always the genes that are the true test to how you feel in your skin, in a literal sense, right? And I know that you can learn to love the skin you're in because if you really wanna be happy, you really have to learn to love yourself, to love everything about you. I mean, there are things, of course, that we don't like. And, you know, again, we can change those. It's so cool that we can be our own objective observer and we can change something. We can, we can be objective about ourselves and say, you know, I don't really like the way I'm looking right now or I don't like my style. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to change my style. We can do that like that, you know? We can reinvent ourselves. We can shift our image in a moment. It's up to you. It's an amazing thing to love yourself. I think when we're young girls, we're taught that maybe that seems selfish or self-centered. Man, what a bum rap we received because there's nothing further from the truth. It's the best thing that you can do for yourself is to love yourself, accept yourself, respect yourself, honor yourself in the most genuine way 
not in a conceited way, but in a genuine way. And when you are comfortable in the skin you're in and you're loving yourself, others are drawn to you. I've spoken about this before and it's a beautiful thing because then you can have all these new relationships and new friendships and new um, interactions. You know, I work in a, in a college and I have a lot of interaction with people every day. Uh, and I love my job because of that. And I learn so much from people, you know, from professors to general contractors, to um, students, um, not as many students come in the office. Uh, I work in the facilities department, but we get a lot of professors and when I have to give them keys or another item, I always ask them what department, what are they teaching this semester? And I'm also a student there, so I learn so much. And then we have this little side chat and I exchange how I feel about something. And it's, it's a comfort zone that I have found and we can all find so that we can be comfortable in any situation. That's really the core of loving the skin you're in is so that no matter what situation you step into, no matter what kind of person, whether they're a doctor, a scholar, a lawyer, uh, the president, you know, whoever it is, these people can really enhance our lives. Uh, and if we let ourselves bring their essence into our life and being comfortable while that's happening, it's a really, really great, great feeling. And again, we learn so much as we're going along. My neighbor is calling me, but I'm not gonna uh, answer her right now because I really wanna do this, unfortunately. Ugh. I don't get a lot of privacy, unfortunately. Okay. Um, another thing is lack of body confidence is usually because we think other women are better. Like I said earlier, more attractive, slimmer, fitter, smarter, sexier. So what? We had our time. We're still having our time. I am, aren't you? <laughs> a survey shows that 40% of women are dissatisfied with the way they look, which impacts on the way they behave. Think about that for a minute. If you're not feeling comfortable in your skin and comfortable with you know, how you look and you feel, you're gonna behave in, that, in a way that others are gonna feel uncomfortable around you. But if you are comfortable, others are gonna feel great around you. And like I said, they're gonna to wanna to be around you and you're gonna to wanna to be around them. It's a win-win situation. You're uniquely you. There is no one like you. Like I said, no one. Supposedly, we all have a look-alike. I hear it a lot. Who I look like. Okay, nice, thank you. But we all have a look-alike, right? But there's no one like you. They're not you. You're you. Uniquely you beautiful you. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder. And the most important person is you. Exercise. So I talked in my promos about some of the uh, core firming exercises that I'm doing and I'm starting to see change. It happens very quickly. Now, I used to work out a lot in a gym, so my muscle has memory, because muscle does have memory. And I did a lot of weight training. So I can still see some of the outline over some of the fat of the muscle tone that I used to have. So when I start doing these core exercises, it, it comes pretty quickly. So I mentioned one of my favorite favorite is plank. It is an intense, I mean, you think getting on the forearms, right? And straightening your legs and holding yourself isn't gonna be that hard. It's hard, it's dead weight, but you gotta just, Breathe through the whole thing. That's the key. Breathe. Don't hold your breath. If you hold your breath, you're not going to be able to really have the best impact with it. So breathe. And I do like 30 seconds and then I drop. And then take a little rest, do another 30 seconds, and so on, like three reps. 
So plank is an amazing fat burner and firmer. Lunges, squats, marching in place. I said in one of the promos, walking in place. I meant marching in place. It is so amazing. And you do it until you can't do it anymore. So I usually do like a hundred marches and then your legs are really tight, you know? So yoga poses, yoga, you know, look them up. You can find them anywhere. There's a bunch of different, I do warrior one and warrior two because those are deep. Like warrior one, you go up and then on warrior two, you turn and you go deeper and you hold those poses and they're really fantastic for firming. You can also do push-ups and sit-ups. Um, I do them sometimes and I exercise, I said three to four days a week, but it's really every other day because I wanna give my muscles a chance to recover because I was very sore the other day. Another one that I do is I stand at the counter and I bounce and that I tuck my butt and I get on the balls of my feet and I bounce. That's another really fantastic um, firmer. And you can also put one leg out back, side, back, while you're at the counter, tuck butt up on the balls of your feet. And then the other leg, side, back, side, back. These things really, they work very fast. You'll see results pretty quickly, but you have to stay consistent. You know, that's really the key to everything is being consistent, um, getting into a routine. And we all fall short sometimes, you know, we all, in the beginning, we're like gung-ho, yeah, it's going great, You're starting to lose weight, starting to firm up, and then something happens and you get off track with that. But the real key to anything, to anything, is consistency and sticking with it. That's really, you know, important. Um, you don't have to kill yourself. You, you have to get your heart rate up. You, you do want some aerobic because that, you know, burns the fat. Um, get your heart rate up, which is really great for your heart and your lungs. And always remember to breathe when you're exercising. Very important. We have a tendency to hold our breath. Um, but um, you don't have to join a gym. You, you, these, these core firming exercises are so effective. They're really incredible, actually. And walking. Is there anything better than walking at sunset or walking in nature, walking at night? I need a sip of coffee. Mm. Mm. One of my very favorite things in the world. I do love coffee. Eating well. So as a lot of you know, and thank you for your wishes again, I was really sick a couple of weeks ago. Um, I still haven't gotten any results back from my test, but I, I'm feeling back to normal pretty much because I've cut out uh, a lot of the low FOP, which are short term carbs that are awful for me. So really cut way back on the bread and crackers and um, even dressings, mayonnaise. So now I'm having like salads with tuna fish and fruit. Oh, it was so delicious and it's so good for you. Low calorie. And the other thing that I cannot emphasize enough, I know you're probably getting sick of it, meditation. If I had to say what was the one thing that really changed me for the better was meditation. I cannot emphasize enough. And you say, oh, how do I meditate? There are so many videos on YouTube. I have some meditations on my YouTube channel as well. You sit and you close your eyes and you're in non-thought, you're in your beautiful skin. And over time, you wanna increase self-love and self-esteem, meditate. You'll see. The other thing I wanna read, a couple of little articles and then I'll let you go to your beautiful evening gorgeous sunset right now actually through the clouds but you can see the color is changing a little bit I have such a good view nice so the tennis great Martina Navr Navratilova who is now retired from tennis and she is an artist now she's painting 
So she was being interviewed and they asked, you're now an artist. Any advice for starting a second career? And she responded, when in doubt, go for the net, push the envelope, get out of your comfort zone and take chances. I like to force the action, she says. For me, it's never too late. Now check this out. It's never too late because you don't know how long you're going to live anyway, precisely. I love that. It's never too late because you don't know how long you're going to live anyway. Don't be afraid to get a fresh start. If not now, when? Love that. So I'll read you a quick little article on how exercise may slow Alzheimer's memory loss. This was really cool. And these are from AARP magazine, which by the way, if you're not a member, I suggest becoming one. Um, it's cheap, it's like $16 a year. And their magazine is incredible. They have some amazing articles. They're well-researched, well-written, simple, short. I love it. It's one of my favorite reads actually each month. There is new support for the premise that regular exercise may help slow memory loss in older adults with mild to moderate Alzheimer's disease. A trial led by a researcher at the Arizona State University, ASU, Edson College of Nursing and Health Innovation, had participants either ride a stationary bike or do stretching for six months. Those who took part in the regular exercise program had significantly less memory loss than those who don't follow a particular exercise regimen, the study authors said. And researchers found benefits for participants who rode an exercise bike or did stretching activity. The results were published recently in the Journal of Alzheimer's Disease. Our primary finding indicates that a six month aerobic exercise intervention significantly reduced cognitive decline for Alzheimer's dementia, said study corresponding author Fang Yu, a professor at ASU in a news release. Exercise has other benefits as part of Alzheimer's therapy, she said. The current collective evidence on its benefits supports the use of aerobic exercise as an additional therapy for Alzheimer's disease. We all know that exercise has incredible benefits. And I was doing, um, I did a 21 day meditation with Alicia Keys. I also, and Deepak Chopra. I also mentioned that in my promo. I love this. I'm going to read you two things that each, that they said. Alicia Keys. Express your sensuality of the divine feminine and connect with the divine within you. Sensuality draws us to others and nature, beauty, and sensuality sparks joy in us. That's being comfortable in your skin. Deepak Chopra. With sensuousness, desire, and desire... I'm sorry, let me start over. With sensuousness, desire drives everything that we do. So when you're feeling sensuous and feeling desire... Desire drives everything we do, right? No matter what we want to do. We want to travel. We want to take up bike riding. I haven't done that in a long time, right? Whatever it is, it starts with a desire. So I thought those were really beautiful. Embrace your shape, your skin, everything about you. When you say to yourself, I'm fat, I'm old. Oh, I'm not as pretty as I used to be. Stop yourself and say, I love myself. I accept myself where I am right now, right as I am. Talk in a positive way to yourself. That's very important. Always talk in a positive way. You know, sometimes I'll drop something and I'll be, oh, you idiot. Well, I'm just frustrated in that moment, but then I, sorry, I called you that, Chris. I'll leave you with this. This is a present uh, moment reminder that I get each day in my email by Eckhart Tolle. Part of manifestation practice is what you let go of rather than what you add. 
part of manifestation practice is what you let go of rather than what you add. That's beautiful. He wrote the book, The Power of Now, which is incredible. Live in the now. So, you know, over the time and years that you spend doing these modalities, you, you are actually changing your, your molecular system. You're changing your brain. You're changing your outlook. And then you become all these positive things. So it's so important to love the skin you're in. Talk kind, loving thoughts to yourself. You'll be happier. People will love being around you. You'll love being around other people. Love the skin you're in. So thank you for joining me tonight. And my next one will be in um, July. Uh, I am looking forward to, I'm not sure what I'm going to focus on yet, but um, I have to make a decision pretty quickly, right? Because each Monday I'm going to do a live Facebook promo. So thank you for joining me tonight, everybody. Have a beautiful evening. I'll see you live on Facebook each Monday, and I'll see you here on uh, 60 and Beyond with Skylark in July. Thank you. Peace, love, have a great night.